Today we're going to talk about uh, TIG welding and TIG stands for tungsten inert gas also known as heliarc welding. Now with TIG welding you can weld all different types of materials. You can weld aluminum, you can weld steels, you can weld steel alloys, in other words stainless steels. Um, it's probably one of the most versatile uh, welding processes that are out there but uh, it also takes some time and talent to be able to do it. Uh, once you get the ha hang of it it's fairly easy. It's like riding a bicycle. You can come back to it after not doing it for a while and it doesn't take long to get back to the point of uh, being able to be proficient at it again. Now I'm going to run through some of the parts of a TIG torch or the torch, the welding whip basically for welding with TIG welding. Um, so first I will show you this one which is a air-cooled TIG torch. This would be your average TIG torch that you would use on average thickness material and uh, you could use it on thin aluminum or you could use it on pretty much all of your stainless steels. Uh, once you get to the heavier thickness uh, aluminums then you would want to go to a water-cooled TIG torch and a water-cooled TIG torch would look like this. Actually this has a button on it right here which turns the torch on and off and it increases or decreases the uh, amperage that you're running. Now all of the ends of the TIG torch here which this would be called the button, this would be called the cup and then the internal parts would be the collet and this would be the tungsten on the end here that sticks out. That's the actual weld electrode that uh, puts the power out. Now with TIG you will always feed in the wire by hand with your left hand while you are um, washing over and welding with your right hand. I will take uh, the air cooled TIG torch apart to show you the internal working parts. I'm screwing the button off the back. The button is just basically tightens up the collet onto the uh, tungsten internally. Now I'm taking the cup off. So right here is the piece of tungsten. That's the electrode that actually creates the heat and makes the arc on the material that you're making, that you're welding. This is the collet. The collet is made of two pieces. So you have an external and an internal. And as the button pushes down on it, as you can see the lines in here, it clamps down on the tungsten that's inside of there. So by screwing that back inside of here, and screwing the button on, you will be able to see that I can no longer move the tungsten. So putting the cup on with the tungsten sticking out, then you can adjust that tungsten to the amount that you want it to be out. Now depending upon what you're working on, you are only going to want to have it sticking out someplace between an eighth and a quarter of an inch at maximum. Um, and this tungsten uh, inert gas welding, the, this is the tungsten and the inert gas would normally be something like an argon, 100% argon, which is what I use on all of my welding, whether it be aluminum, stainless steel, or steel, it's the most versatile. 100% argon is the most versatile. Um, you can get mixes where you use um, helium uh, if you're welding upside down, helium's lighter than air, so then the gas will stay up above you where argon is heavier than air, so the argon will fall down. So depending upon your situation and the area that you're in, it depends upon whether you want to use a helium mix or a straight argon. Um, the next thing would be different size cups. Now as you can see over here, I have different size cups. This is a six cup, this is a seven cup, and this is an 8 cup and that all has to do with the diameter of the cup down on the bottom side and that diameter a lot of times is preference but also that has to do with how far you travel in a given amount that you're welding so when you're welding this is called walking the cup and when you're welding if you have a bigger diameter cup you will obviously travel farther for each little walk that you do. If you have a smaller diameter cup, you won't travel as far. 
Now this is also dependent upon how fast you are moving because obviously if you're moving faster you are going to travel more distance. Also, you have different size tungsten. This is a 532, this is a 1 8 inch, this is a 332, and this is a 1 16 inch. Little bitty guy. Now, realize the difference in the size of the tungsten also has to do with what you are welding. The thinner the material you're welding, the smaller size tungsten. And obviously you need to have the correct size collets to match your tungsten size. If you're welding something very thin, you're going to be want, to want to be down to this 16th inch tungsten. If you're welding something thicker, you're going to want the heavier stuff. What happens in your tungsten is you're welding something that's really thick and a smaller diameter tungsten, the tungsten will actually melt away. It has a I can't remember the melting temperature, but it's, it's enormous. That's why they use tungsten for this process. And it actually will get heated up to the point that it will be like a wet noodle. So you want to have the larger tungsten for the thicker type materials. When you get down to the thin materials, the tungsten never gets a chance to heat up before the material disappears. So uh, that's why you want to use that. And you would also use your filler wire. Whichever filler wire you happen to have would also go by the thickness of the material that you have. So if you're welding with a 16th inch uh, tungsten, you would also probably use like a 16th inch welding wire, filler wire, to go along with that. If you go with a thicker wire, again, your material will disappear before the welding wire ever gets melted. Same thing goes with the heavier stuff. If you use the heavier stuff, you're welding something thicker, 532 tungsten, then you're going to need thicker filler wire. You're going to need like eighth inch or 532 filler wire to go along with that. There is other things that you can do. Uh, you can make handy little tubes like this for putting in your uh, tungsten, for keeping your tungsten in. This would have both your sharpened tungsten, so you can see here if you cut the tungsten in half and you sharpen both sides, it works good. Then you've got two pieces to use. This also has the tungstens that have been used. You can see that one had a lot of, a lot of aluminum on the ends of it where I had dipped my tungsten in. The tungsten is never supposed to actually touch the metal. And uh, you will find that out in my later videos as I go on further into welding. And this is the end of part one. Thank you and have a great day. If you have any questions, touch base with me. Thank you.